And now for something completely different. Uh, if you came looking for a fishing video, you're going to be very disappointed. Uh, today we're going to talk about vintage fixed lens rangefinder cameras. This is a Canon Canon at QL25. I uh, bought this one, I don't know, a month ago, and it was all messed up. And I fixed it, and it was pretty easy to do. If you're a little bit handy, you can figure it out with the right tools. I didn't even have the right tools. I cheated and used tools I probably shouldn't have. So you can do that too, you know, at your own risk, of course. Uh, there are, I think, 13 different iterations of the Canon Canonet. This is the QL25, and that came as one of the budget models. It has a 2.5 lens, um, shutter speed from 500 down to a 15th, and you can't see that. Shutter speed from 500 down to a 15th, and then bulb. And it actually has a meter, which is right there, that'll allow you to shoot in what's basically shutter priority mode, which is pretty cool for something from the mid 60s. Uh, and it is a rangefinder, so it doesn't have traditional focusing, which is a whole nother story altogether. I got this one, broke it down, put it back together, got it to work pretty easily. Uh, the 25 is one of the less desirable models because of the slower lens. It's also a larger camera than some of the, the slightly newer models. What I got today is the QL17. Now there are a couple different models of the QL17. There's the G3 and this is the regular old QL17 and it has a slightly smaller body style than the 25, let me show you. A little bit smaller. But I think they made 17s in this size too. There, there are just a bunch of different models, different shapes, different iterations. I think Canon was going crazy because they were selling like hotcakes. The cool thing about the 17 is it's a 1.7, a little bit smaller. They're just cool little cameras. And with a little bit of know-how, they're pretty easy to take apart. Uh, today I'm gonna pull the top off this one clean the rangefinder, and then there's something going on with the film rewind detent lever. I'll show you. It's just flopping around. It should lock in. I think we're missing a spring there somewhere, which might be harder to solve than <laughs> I might like. This is the 25. It's very nice. It just pops right up and out. There's definitely a spring in there. So we're going to look at that maybe. But we're going to show you how to pop this top off, clean the rangefinder. And we'll go from there. All right, first things first is popping this top off. Pretty easy to do. Uh, you only need two tools, really. The first, a very small Phillips head screwdriver. A pretty accurate size right there. A second, and this is the odd one, you need something that's non-marring that can grip this ring on top of the advance lever. So this ring is threaded and needs to come off. Uh, sometimes they're loose, you can do it with your hands. Not typically the case. So what I like to do, what's been simple and easy for me, take a pair of vice grips, scratch that, channel locks. I mean, you could use vice grips, but probably not the best idea. Channel locks and just put some duct tape on the tip of them. This way they're not going to scratch that ring up because it's pretty soft metal. So we'll save that for last. That's the, uh, that's the only real difficult part here. First things first, oh, also, get yourself something to put all your tiny little parts in so you don't lose them. First things first, open the camera up, do that, pull up on the rewind lever, it just should pop right open. Now you push the rewind lever down, and it has a slot in it. The slot right here. I'm use a different screwdriver. You see that slot? All you do is put your screwdriver in that slot. And at the same time, I'll try to do this so you can see what I'm doing. Screwdriver in the slot. And at the same time, you're going to turn the rewind lever, and that should just unscrew nice and easy, fall right off. And so that's first part. There's another thing I want to clean under there. 
So put your rewind lever somewhere you're not going to lose it. Then you've got Phillips head screw here, Phillips head screw on the back here, and you have a third one on the opposite side. I'm going to pull them all out carefully and slowly so you don't strip them. They are very small. And if you don't have a small enough screwdriver, you may want to invest in getting one. Because if you strip these, it will be a nightmare to get them out. Work slowly, make sure you're not going to strip them or drop them. Because if you drop these, you're never going to find them, that's for sure. This last one out. Go. All right, now the final step is removing this ring, which is, I'm going to be honest, it's a pain. So I'm probably going to have to try this six times to get it done, but I'll at least show you how. And to get your non marring, you know, plier like tool of some sort, you get around that ring and turn it off. Oh, I got it first try. <laughs> nice. On my QL25, I messed with that for like 10 minutes. I just could not get it. Pull that off and carefully lift the whole lever up. It's underneath the top ring that you just unscrewed. There should be two washers. One like this like a crush washer. You can see it's bent. Then a bronze colored flat washer underneath that. Just remember what order they go in. The bronze one goes into the lever first. The other one on top. I'm going to clean that all up while we got it apart. Now all you have to do is gently lift the top right off. Should be all you have to do. Oh, there we go. Just give her a little wiggle. Oh, there's another ring. And that is the assembly that goes over top of oh, the shutter button. Which I'm not trying to take apart right now. Put that back together. All right, so now you want to lift this black plate. Actually, let me use something that's not metal to show you. This black plate right here, underneath that is where the viewfinder is. Yeah, this camera is not in the greatest shape inside. I thought it was going to be a little better than it was than it is. Now on the 25 here and here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Here and here, there are actually tiny little Phillips head screws. And on this, it appears that they're just sitting in there. Yep, it just lifts right off. Set that aside. Now, this is the very important part. Inside the viewfinder, the rangefinder, you've got your front viewfinder glass, your rear viewfinder glass, and these diagonal pieces here are what make the, the rangefinder assembly work. So they have a special coating on them and you do not want to take it off. So we're going to clean with alcohol, but we are not going to touch those. That is beyond uh, amateur, I think. So, whatever you do, we're going to be very careful not to touch this diagonal piece and this diagonal piece. And only clean this and this. Let's pause for a second while I go find where I put all my alcohol and swabs. Alright, so rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. You want to get the highest content, the highest percentage alcohol you can find. Because it dries quicker. 
and we are just going to scrub gently the front and rear viewfinder glass. Highest alcohol content because it evaporates quickly and you want it to evaporate off what you clean as quickly as possible. And remember, we're not touching this diagonal piece here or this diagonal piece here. That is important. This rangefinder, this, uh, this glass here is pretty clean, which is surprising because the rest of the camera is not. I just like to go until you get that Q-tip clean. That one is not. But I did just clean this top, which is pretty filthy from being up against the top casing. Clean, 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 clean. Can't clean anymore. Get us some more alcohol. Scrubbing that glass clean till the Q-tip comes out clean every time. Well, that's pretty clean. Do the front, the outside too. This is important in these old rangefinders because you want to have as much light coming through to your eye as you can. That's pretty darn clean. Okay. Let's do the back. Again, being careful not to touch that diagonal piece in the center. That's very clean. Surprisingly clean. Clean the back. What you want to do is try not to leave little pieces of cotton in there. That is a, going to be a problem if you do that. I am not sure what all this crap on here is. It looks, looks burnt. Doesn't look good. It's corrosion is what it is. I'm going to go get find my blower and we're going to blow this all out. And we're going to go from there. All right. We're going to blow as much crap out of here as we can out of everything. Woo! I do kind of want to scrape some of this corrosion off, but I don't want it going down inside this mechanism. I'm probably not going to be able to see this. I'm just going to dust some of that off. Now, there's the needle that'll blow. That needle, if you can see that moving, let's see if I can give you a better view. Get some light on it. Right here. That is the needle that will show you your shutter speed through the viewfinder if you want to use this in automatic mode. Which, like I said earlier, is basically shutter priority. It's very important to try and keep... Oh, it's real dirty in there. Hmm, I don't know what we're going to do about that. It's important to try and keep this stuff all the way it is, unless you know what you're doing. This is just... Usually you can get away with just giving this all a good clean, and everything should work just okay. back together the exact same way you took it apart actually I want to clean this all up before I do that also go ahead and clean this viewfinder window the rangefinder window here the back viewfinder window and this film advance window are all pretty crusty this whole top assembly is pretty crusty I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna clean this all up so let me do that and then we'll put it back together. 
Well, things got a little bit complicated. I cleaned up the top cover, and then I started messing with the rewind lever, and there's a spring right here. This one looks real wonky because I just made it myself. I broke this spring. There it is in two pieces. Oops. Broke it, and so I made myself a new one out of the edge of this cheese grater. <laughs> so be careful when you're screwing around with tiny little 50 year old springs. I had to dremel some things, things got, things got very complicated. But let's put this back together. So first things first, the black plate covers the top of the rangefinder mechanism here. Make sure that's clean. <laughs> You've got little posts right here, right there. Another one. No, that's it. Yeah, this is different than the the QL25 I have. I'll set that down on top of those posts carefully. Nope. And there's a small slot right here where the needle that shows you your aperture is inside the viewfinder. And be careful not to impede the tip of that spring is what the needle is. So get that plate back in place. So that's on there. And then the top cover. Snug that down on. There we go. And I'm going to put this rewind lever back on first because it's making me nervous. So just like we took it off, take a screwdriver or something. Try and get this so you can see it. And hold that slot that would hold the film canister. And screw the lever back on. Try to. There we go. Oh, so much better than it used to be. <laughs> I'm glad I messed with it, even though I broke it and it took me an hour to make a new spring. Get that reasonably tight. There we go. So that's holding that side on. And while we're at it. This whole setup back together. That goes down on top of the top cover, first washer. And you've got your advanced lever, and that's got a notch in it right here. You know what? I wanted to clean that up quick. Yeah, it's a little bit better some of the gunk out of there. Mostly just for aesthetics. I don't really mind that it's dirty. I mean, I don't think it's going to affect operation. There we go. And let's get inside that ring once more. Good enough for government work. So that notch right there has got to line up with the notch here. Line that up, set that down. Then you've got flat bronze colored washer. Actually, got some cotton fibers in there from cleaning that. Get the lever seated in the notch bronze colored washer. You've got the bent looking crush washer that goes in there next. Then finally, see if we can get this started. A 
you got to keep that lever in that notch while you're doing this. I get that ring to set down. Screw that down as tight as you can by hand. And we're going to take our homemade tool, our non marring channel locks. Just give it one good turn. There we go. And make sure you can't loosen it by hand. It should be probably tight enough. Just make sure it's snug. And last but not least, the three little Phillips head screws. Again, don't drop these. You will not find them if you do. I am sure of it. Just snug on those. They don't have to be tight. They're not holding anything mechanical in place that matters. Get this back one in. Try to just snug. And that's it. All back together. Everything appears to be working. Look at that. All right, now, usually, your next biggest problem with these cameras is the shutter and the aperture not moving because they've got old gunky lubricant on them and they stick. This one actually seems to be working pretty good, but I may pull the lens apart just to clean it out. It's definitely gunky on the outside. I haven't really taken a good look at it yet. So we'll see what happens. I'll take that off bulb. Yeah, it seems like it wants to fire well on all shutter speeds, and the aperture seems to move pretty freely. So I may not have to take the lens all the way apart. But if I do, stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching this video that wasn't about fishing at all.